In this video, we're going to tell you five things to avoid when you come to Fortaventura. These are things to keep you safe, to make sure you have a great time, and also some pet peeves we have that you should really avoid. So, let's crack on. Number one is contaminated water. Yeah, there's a beach in Corralejo called Playa Corralejo, and there's a big sign there. Actually, it's a small sign, but it says the water's contaminated, and they recommend that you don't swim there. We have stupidly swam there a few times. <coughs> and look how that turned out. <laughs> <laughs> Number two is people walking on the cycle lanes. This is one of my biggest pet peeves. Same. And it's not even, to be fair, it's not even the fault of like the locals and the tourists walking in the cycle lane. I think it's very bad planning from La Liva Council, to be fair. Because if you're going to make a cycle lane, I think they should put it on the side of the road and not where, like, on the, on the pavement where the pedestrians walk. Mm. It doesn't make sense to me. And also, it's not just in the pavement where they walk, it's slap bang in the middle of it. So you can yeah. walk either side. <sighs> I purposely go close to people to try and, like, warn them and then they always get off. Do I that? do that as well, Skin yeah, past yeah. Them. So if you guys are watching this video and you're walking down Coralajo's main high street, look out for the cycle lane because if you're walking in it and we're cycling past, we're, we're, we're probably gonna damaged, not going to stop yeah. for you, yeah. No. And uh, yeah, it's just annoying. So try your best to be conscious of it. I mean, everyone does it sometimes, especially in a place you don't know. Like we've done it before. David did it. We went to Amsterdam. Oh, you did it the other way around. No, I hit yes. somebody. <laughs> <laughs> we were in Amsterdam and uh, cycling around as you do in Amsterdam. And uh, yeah, a woman stepped out on the cycle lane, didn't look. They just smacked straight into her groin. I didn't <laughs> stop. It's no. just that you've got to, you've got to teach these people a lesson. And sometimes you have to be you have to learn the hard way. Yeah, that was a whole like yeah. fiasco, wasn't it? We had to stop, make sure she's okay. It wasn't like a hit and run scenario. I, I made her apologise at the end. But it's kind of, it is it's whoever steps out full, isn't it? it? Is Unless course. you're going rapid. If you're going really fast, okay. But if you're going at a normal healthy speed, I probably could have braked. <laughs> 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 you want to prove a point? These people need to learn. <laughs> yeah, and by eighty five, you should really know you're not just. <laughs> <I'm joking. laughs> No, but seriously, don't walk in the cycle lanes. Let's move yeah. on. Number three is using electric scooters inappropriately. Yeah, so we know we have the Link scooters now in Corralejo. A lot of people go on them two at a time, and they're swerving all over the place. A lot of times they're drunk. Don't do that. Please don't do that. And also, a lot of people have their own personal scooters, and these don't have a speed limit. Well, they probably do, but they like max out at like, maybe yeah. like 30 or something. People are going rapid down the main street. People go on the roads. Nightmare. If you're going to have a scooter or go on the Links, please, like... Be careful, because yeah. it's been some close, like, near-death experiences, personally. A lot of the people that have, like, the private ones as well, the link ones are a bit slower, so it's not so bad, but the, the, the private ones, they literally weave in and out of people, because they, they, they kind of don't even ignore... If, the, if there's the, in a place where there's no cycle lane, yeah, then you, they're just weaving in and out of pedestrians, yeah. and it is dangerous. If you're on a cycle lane, then fair enough, but if you're, yeah, on the pavement, yeah. danger. Yeah, if you're on a cycle lane, you deserve to get hit, but... So these scooters aren't just a problem in Coralajo. I was in Lisbon last week and they've got Link scooters there. They've also got another one called Bolt. It's like a turquoise scooter as well. Oh. So they're, they're actually everywhere. Yeah, it's, it's the next pandemic, I think. The it scooters, is, it's, like. a, it's probably more of a pandemic than um, yeah. COVID. Number four is surfing unsupervised without experience or being overconfident. So I did this because Harry and I started renting some surfboards and going to Grandes Playas and just kind of trying it with ourselves and with Stuart, as you guys saw in, a, in an old video of ours. And, I think I got overconfident. Yeah. So one day I went with Stuart and another friend of ours to El Cotillo and the waves in El Cotillo are known for being really, really big. And we got there and it was way too big for me. I knew it was way too big for me. The lifeguard even told me to not surf. Yeah. And I was so stupid. I was overconfident and I went into the water anyway. And I, at first I was fine. I literally was going past the waves and like I was past the break of the waves. So I was like, it was okay out there. But then obviously you have to try and surf and I went for my first wave and I was kind of like, you know how you surf, You're like, if the wave's coming like here, mm. you have to be like your head is going with the break. Yeah. Is that, is that a good way of explaining it? I don't know. I think we don't really know how to do it, but. No. But basically the wave was coming here and my surfboard was like here. Sideways. You were side like, on I was to sideways wave. onto the yeah. wave because I couldn't decide whether I was going to take this wave or not. I could yeah. not decide. I was like, should I have it? Should I? And by the time I hadn't decided, I was already flipped and I was like smashed down under the water. The surfboard was like a massive one because I'm a beginner. So that was just became dead weight attached to my foot, like like an anchor almost bringing yeah. me down. Yeah. Uh, and I was under the water in Cotillo for so, so long. I eventually get near the top and then another wave crashes and I'm already underwater and you just feel more water falling on top of you and I get pushed down again. And I genuinely feared for my life. I I, th I would say that's one of the closest like, near death experiences yeah. I've had. In the end, you managed to get out. No? In the end, I managed to get out. I don't really know how that happened because 
I, I got lucky. It happened a couple of times where I was getting hit down with water, and I was just. I think in the end, I, I was under the water, and I was just swimming like back to the shore from under the water. But if I'd got that wrong, if I didn't know which way the shore was, I yeah. could have been in like massive trouble. No, it's very dangerous, and I did the same thing being overconfident as well with windsurfing. Literally the same story. I got told not to go near some waves, and I thought, oh, I'll be fine. They don't look that big, and when you get there, they're a lot bigger. Like the thing is, when you look at waves from the shore, they don't look as big as when you're when you're under them. Like they're completely mm. like overpowering, mm. and you can't just stop like the the sea's not going to stop for you it's going to keep going and keep battling exactly. so if it's your first time surfing go with a school go with someone that knows what they're doing yeah. and uh, don't get overconfident even if you have done it a few times obviously you probably know like us you probably learnt your lesson but some people learn when it's too late and like it's, it's exactly. something you definitely have to be warned of because the, yeah the sea's brutal and if you are like us and you've done it a few times and you're fine going without the school then go somewhere near a lifeguard and yeah. listen to the lifeguard because on that day I didn't listen to it. Yeah it's very stupid but it's one of those things that like I don't know in hindsight you're like I was so stupid. I was so stupid. And it's I it's because I'd driven for like 45 minutes to get to Quartier yeah. you, you've got the boards from the shop you've gone through so much effort to get there yeah. I was like I just want to surf because there's no point getting there turning around and coming back. Yeah. I felt like a wasted day. So but that feeling being in the sea getting pushed on the waves, you're like, fuck, oh, I wish I just, I wish I, I, wish yeah. I just, I don't care how much yeah. it costs, like how much time it costs, like, no, it's a horrible it's feeling to be, that. yeah. So yeah. God, that was deep, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a bit. It's like the scene, but yeah. Yeah. At this point in the video, we wanted to say thank you so much to everyone that left a tip on buy me a coffee or PayPal. It means so much. Thank you for supporting this channel. Yep, that really helps us to carry on making these videos for you guys. If you want to support this channel, then there's some links in the description box below to buy me a coffee. And if you're not familiar with that, then you can also follow our link to PayPal and send us a tip via PayPal. Thank you so much. Cheers, let's carry on with the video. Number five is going to Lobos unprepared. Yeah, we did a video, we went to Lobos and we actually went unprepared. Not because we were like showing an example of what not to do, just because we just completely did it wrong. The stupid and, brothers. Uh, the stupid brothers. And we went without food, without water, and in flip-flops and if you've ever been to Lobos before you know there's not much there we had been to Lobos before so I don't know what we were thinking we are just stupid like as we've realized throughout this yeah. video we're just a lot more stupid than we think yeah. and uh, <laughs> and we were just like walking around Lobos where it's all rocks in flip-flops climbing mountains I couldn't even do it because of my flip-flops yeah. and also I was like overheating because we didn't bring any water I had a towel over my head because it was just overheating Lobos also doesn't have any shade so you've got to maybe bring an umbrella or bring you've got to prepare and uh, we really, really didn't do that, so no. be prepared. Be prepared. If you want to go find out how our Lobos experience went, you can go and watch that video right here. And we're also going to put another video on the screen here of our Main Street walk we did recently, where we tell you what Corolla has like now, and also tell you some stories of what's going on recently in our lives. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.